What's up, Chiefs Kingdom? Let's talk training camp. Welcome back to Kingdom Come Chiefs Podcast. Let's get right into it. Let's do our little channel talk that we always do right at the beginning. Get it out of the way. Thank you so much for everybody supporting the channel. I really appreciate it. You guys are doing a great job. We do have that goal of 1,000 subscribers. You guys are marching towards it. We're over 150, but if you like what's going on on the channel, tell a friend, man. Share it. Uh, get some more people over here so we can build that community up. Thank you for liking, sharing, subscribing, commenting, doing all that stuff uh, that helps build the channel. The more you guys do that stuff, the more it gets out into the algorithm and just pops up on people's timelines. The more they click on it, the more people will get in and the quicker we'll get to that 1000 and then I can give some stuff away. Uh, that will be our first giveaway when we hit a thousand subscribers. I'm going to give some stuff away that I'm going to go down and purchase down at training camp in St. Joe very soon. So thank you for all the help reaching that. Uh, here we are at the one minute mark. We're going to get right into uh, we're going to get right into the news. And the biggest news of the day is, of course, Carlos Dunlop has signed with the Kansas City Chiefs for a one year up to eight million dollar contract. So up to just means that there are incentives in the contract for performance and that he can reach that um, through performance goals. So that's an awesome thing. Um, real quick, let's talk about that defensive end group because I am really excited now. I feel like now that you look across the roster, adding Carlos Dunlop was a big deal. It's not like he's a superstar. That's not what I'm saying, but he did have eight and a half sacks last year, um, with limited snaps. So that's, that's really amazing performance. He can add something off the bench and rotate in. And for us, that was huge because it really kind of shores up that defensive end position. He does scheme fit really well for uh, a Spags defense. He is a kind of a Spags prototypical end, um, which you guys know how I feel about that. I'm not even going to get into how me and Spags disagree on what a defensive end should look like. Uh, but Carlos Dunlop, obviously a good defensive end. I, and I am happy, so don't get it twisted when I say stuff like that. Don't feel like I'm not happy about him or he's not what I wanted. He, Carlos Dunlop, very good player. Um, and let's talk about him real quick. Let's talk about what he brings to the team, um, just so you guys know. Like I said, he can make up to a million dollars or eight million dollars, excuse me. And let's see. He is, yep, here's his career total. So, 539 total tackles, 96 sacks, 21 forced fumbles, 9 fumble recoveries, 69 passes batted down, 2 interceptions, and 3 defensive touchdowns, which is pretty impressive. He's 33 years old, and um, he does have that kind of elite size. Uh, he's not a real quick, fast guy. He's a, he's a bigger guy at the defensive end. And like I said, 8.5 sacks last year. So really excited about making the signing because now when you look across the roster you don't feel like there's any glaring weaknesses and they've done more than just this uh, at the defensive end position which is exciting so uh, they also brought in the former Dallas Cowboy uh, Azura Kamara who was uh, Kansas Jayhawk of course and you know he'll be familiar to a lot of Chiefs fans uh, if you watched if you watched uh, last year's Hard Knocks then you saw him on, he got a lot of camera time on hard knocks. And I really grew to like the guy a lot. I was happy for him that he made the team with the Cowboys last year and uh, all of that. And I'm hoping that maybe he can catch on with the chiefs as well. But what you got now is you have a room full of competition. They also brought in Chris Odom, who was the defensive MVP down at the USFL had 13 and a half sacks in the USFL. Does that mean automatically that he'll translate as an NFL talent? No, of course not. Uh, but what it does mean is that now you have Frank Clark, you have uh, George Karloftis, you have Carlos Dunlop, you have Mike Dana, you have Joshua Kando, you have uh, Malik Herring, and you have 
those last two guys that I just talked about and Chris Odom and Azur Kamara all at the defensive end position. And now I'm starting to feel a lot more confident in that position group. And I feel like, hey, man, we're going to have four or five good defensive ends in there that, that, you know, we can roll with. I mean, and I mean, good in that sense of the word, not great. Um, I don't think anybody's going to push for 22 and a half sacks this year from the Kansas City Chiefs unless Carl Loftus just explodes, which is possible, uh, but not likely. Uh, but I, I feel like we're solid at the position now. We can take a little deep breath and say, okay, uh, not so bad. Uh, and that's exciting. And as you look across the roster, I don't feel like there's any glaring weaknesses or anything that we have to be absolutely scared of. Uh, to include the offensive line, I know a lot of you guys are really worried now that Orlando Brown is not around and some of you are so down on Orlando Brown that you would plug in anybody and you think some scrub off the street is better than him, which that's not the case. But um, And truthfully and honestly, Orlando Brown will probably start in game one. Um, this is all just, it's all theater, honestly. Um, I know people are tired of it and I totally understand that, but... In all reality, I, I really do believe Orlando Brown will start the first game for us and play the, the rest of the 16, barring injury. Let's talk about some of the other stuff going on. Um, some random, and, and this is one of the things that I really hate the most. Uh, some random defensive coordinator commented about Patrick Mahomes basically saying that he never gets to his second read and that he plays street ball and all this other dumb ass um, look, sorry, I try not to code. I try not to cuss on the channel. I'm sorry. I'll try to bleep that out. But, um, guys, that's you guys know as well as I know that's a very extremely ignorant thing. I would love to know who said that. And I hate these anonymous coaches coming out. I think it's a cowardice thing to do. If you want to say something about a guy, say something about him and put your name on it. Put your name on it. You won't put your name on it because you know it's a stupid thing to say. Um, and, you know, yesterday I saw a stat that uh, I believe Arrowhead Live put out on Twitter. And it was, you know, Patrick Mahomes since 2018 uh, is first uh, in quarterback rating after his first read. He's got first in yardage and first in touchdowns after his first read. So essentially what Arrowhead Live was saying is, and, it, and those stats were all from PFF because I know there's guys in my audience that just love PFF. Um, I actually like PFF for this kind of stuff. Um, not necessarily their player evaluations, but the cool stats like that that they keep track of are always really cool. And I really love that kind of stuff that PFF does. But hey, man. <laughs> He's literally the best in the league since 2018 after moving on from his first read. So saying that he never gets to his second read is kind of kind of stupid. Uh, but, you know, that's the way it is. I mean, we got a bunch of defensive coordinators out there taking shots at people right now. I think somebody took a shot at, at Lamar recently and said he wasn't a top 10 quarterback and, and never would be. Um, that's, you know, I mean, OK, you don't like Lamar's play style. Just say that. Just say, hey, Lamar's not my style of quarterback, but he's still a great player. Because that's true. Um, he's not necessarily my style of quarterback either. That doesn't mean that I wouldn't have a blast coaching him because uh, he's a special kind of talent. But if I was going out and picking my style of quarterback, it wouldn't be Lamar. Um, is, that, uh, is that bad on me? No. I mean... What's bad is when these cowards say stuff like, oh, he's he's basically saying he's trash. He's not trash. That's I don't know. And guys like Lamar, I mean, whoever this defensive coordinator is that wants to talk about Patrick Mahomes or wants to talk about Lamar or wants to talk about any player, there's a real good chance that um, these guys have more talent than you ever had. So just show a little respect, man. Um but I'm preaching to the choir anyway. So let's get uh, with that. Oh, last thing before we get into training camp news. 
as you guys probably already heard, um, they moved some money around for Travis Kelsey. I think this was a, a message, a little bit of a message, but, and people have written articles about it being a message where we gave Travis Kelsey a raise this year. But I think the other thing is, is this is Veach taking the opportunity to take some of that money on Travis's last year of his contract and move it into this year because we had 13 million in cap room, move it to this year to save us some money a couple years from now so that we can spend a little bit more a couple years from now. So I think it's a little bit just being a good steward of your budget. If you have it now, spend it now. But it also sends a message uh, to guys like Orlando Brown of, hey, buddy, uh, when you're when you're a chief like Travis Kelsey is and you show up to everything and you play and you ball out, we'll take care of you. Um, so that's a good thing. It's a, both Both aspects of that are a good thing. So congrats to Travis, well-deserving. Let's get right into what's going on at training camp today. Uh, we've already seen yesterday, I believe, Juju Smith-Schuster make a diving catch and really go uh, put it, put some effort into going out there and, and making a catch. And to me, in the last couple of days, he's already kind of showed that he expects to be the number one receiver and he knows what that means. And what I mean by that is he's going to put the effort in. He's going to go out there and try to uh, make every single play. And nobody's ever going to say Juju didn't try. Um, so that's good. I, I'm really excited about that. Uh, he's looked really good in training camp thus far from the clips I've seen. And I will be going down there very soon to see it in person. I'll definitely let you guys know. But he also made another big play today. I'm going to try to find the video clip to show on this video. That being said, I am trying to push this video out quick, so I'm the first dude on YouTube that talks about the Carlos Dunlop signing. So if there's no video clip here, I apologize. It just didn't get released yet. Uh, Juju had a nice catch over Joshua Williams, draped all over him, uh, over the middle, and Mahomes put it right in the bread basket, and Juju catches it on the run, takes it the rest of the way to the touchdown. So we'll see if the video comes out. Hopefully it will soon. Uh, lots of people talking about it on Twitter today. They did a lot of seven on seven stuff. You guys know how I feel about seven on seven, which is funny because I have a seven on seven with the uh, cross city rival a little bit later this evening. And it's our last seven on seven of the summer before we get into uh, real football. Uh, but they are doing seven on seven today. At Chiefs training camp or were uh, the, the tight ends were making plays. Blake Bell, Travis Kelsey and Noah Gray all made consecutive plays in seven on seven today. So that's cool. Jarek McKinnon continues to make his case, says Tommy Rezek. Uh, nice catch and run on a wheel route with the first team offense in 11 on 11. Uh, so that means a lot more to me than seven on seven. Marquez Valdez Scantling with the touchdown grab on a slant from Mahomes. And uh, he did have a couple grabs and targets in seven on seven. Seven on seven drills, more about seven on seven. Noah Gray was making a little bit of noise. A lot of people talking about him on Twitter. Brian Cook was getting run with Juan uh, Thornhill in the sevens. Um, so that tells you kind of where they're thinking Brian Cook is. So they're definitely trying to get him ready to go uh, to get time with Juan Thornhill and Justin Reed. Uh, Andy Reed said that in Orlando Brown's absence, the Chiefs would rotate through possible left tackles. And that he uh, that has not begun today with Roderick Johnson manning the position for the second straight day. So I, you know, I'm not sure. That's Pete Sweeney saying that. Um, I'm I'm guessing what he means there is Roderick Johnson. Roderick Johnson doesn't have much of a chance at winning that job, and I would agree with that. So I'll agree with that take. And then that's about it for the news from training camp today. Um, lots of cool stuff going on in Chiefs land. I'm super excited. Uh, man, I can't tell you. Uh, you know, I really am surprised at how much the Carlos Dunlop signing has pumped me up because I'm not like a huge Carlos Dunlop fan. You know, I don't I don't have anything against him at all. But I think just bringing in that veteran presence that has uh, had production very recently 
I think it is just a huge thing for us guys and let me know how you're feeling about it down in the comments. I'm going to keep this video as short as possible. Let's cut it right here at the 15 minute ish mark and thank you for all your support guys again. I'll talk to you soon. Let me know if you guys have something you want me to talk about. Stay safe out there. See you soon. I'm still fly. I'm still fly. Let's go. It could all be worse. I could be a hater like you. It could all be to make the man, but that poison's gonna chew you. Chest now, say it with your chest I'm now. Young.